spiritual healer. My name's Laurie and I'm an astrologer. And I believe that the Ascendant is the most important part of the chart and this video is for Gemini Ascendant. So I do hope you enjoy it. If you do like this video, please like and subscribe it. Please share it with as many people as possible. I am really passionate about astrology and it's something that I'm very, very good at as well. So I would really appreciate you sharing these videos. So Gemini Ascendant. So for the first house cusp, we have Mercury here. So these people are usually very youthful in their energy. They're usually very, they have a very zingy kind of personality. And sometimes, some of them, especially the men, can be very, very immature. So they can be very silly. And they're not necessarily always extroverts. They can be, but in my experience, I see Gemini Ascendants as being more introverted than, than anything else. And but at the same time, they have really, really good social skills, so they can get along with anybody, and they usually have a lot of friends and a lot of associates. But they will prefer these liaisons one-on-one. -on -one. They they're not one for huge parties. They they can be, um, but they 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 have a lot of associates, and their social skills are really good because Gemini is very sociable. They're very good at selling, they can sell to anyone. Their sales skills, especially within their career, are usually amazing. Okay, so they usually know a lot of people and a, a, and a lot of people usually know them as well. Even if it's just casually. They can be guilty sometimes of having lots of acquaintances, but no true natural friends so they can like I say be be semi close to lots of people but yet have no true deep relationships or friendships they can sometimes keep people at arm's length on purpose because they don't want to get hurt or they don't want to be too invested it makes them feel too vulnerable in a way so yeah they're very funny they can be very very witty and very silly Gemini has an amazing sense of humor and these people are usually very they, they can be very ADHD with their sense of humour, if you like. They can be prone to gossip sometimes and they can be a little bitchier than, than other ascendant signs. They can get caught up in the gossip because, because Gemini loves gossip and they, they can get caught up in these things. So because they have lots of acquaintances and associates, so a lot of people know them and they know a lot of people, at the same time they can, they can be loners. So, so yeah, they can be seen on their own. Um, even though everyone seems to know them, they they kind of keep themselves to themselves, and they like to spend a lot of time on their own, and they don't let people in too far. Okay, and they they do use gossip sometimes, even at work. Um, they 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 use it as a way to bond with people and sometimes they don't even realize that they're doing it they're not malicious at all they're such lovely people and they don't mean any malice in it it's usually um hinted with a tinge of, of kind of humor and stuff like that so they're definitely not nasty with it but they can get dragged into the, that kind of gossip and stuff like that so the second house uh, ruler we have cancer here so we have the moon so these people can sometimes have self-esteem that does go a little bit up and down and it depends what's going on in their life so one minute they can be super confident you know they, they can be the life and soul at times and stuff like that but they do have a few downs as well in life and it the second house rules are you know finances so they do have more financial ups and downs as well than, than some um, ascendant signs. And they can make large amounts of money really, really quickly as well at certain times. And then other times it's a little bit different. They're not as consistent as as a lot of ascendant signs. They're not super consistent in, in general. They can be a little bit inconsistent. Um, so Cancer rules the home and the second house rules our daily income. So these people, they can have a lot of professions related to the home. So builders, roofers, property investors, property developers, um, you know, interior designers, um, even people who, who you know, um, estate agents and people like this. 
Um, and they can also sometimes have careers that, that are linked to the moon in some way. So they can um, use the moon um, in, in a spiritual way in, in their careers. Um, so, so that is something that, that they do as well. And their self-esteem can be linked to the moon cycles as well. So this ascendant sign would do well if, you, if they would look at the moon cycles and see how those moon cycles affect them as a person. Okay, so the third house we have Leo here. So this can sometimes mean that these people are very theatrical in the way they express themselves. They can have very big, um, you know, gestures and body language. They can be really over the top and really theatrical with the way they express themselves. And these ascendant signs, a lot of the time, can have a Leo sibling as well. They can usually have a Leo sister. Uh, I'm just going to take my coat off because it's a bit hot. Um, they can have a Leo sibling, a Leo sister, um, or another Leo sibling, or, or definitely a fire sign sibling. We see this is more common uh, with this ascendant sign as well. Uh, they're great communicators, amazing salespeople, and they can literally sell sand to the Arabs. Like they, 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 they can sell anything to anybody. And they, the way they communicate, they, they, they shine. So they're very comfortable, you know, in front of groups. Usually, even if they are more introverted, which they usually are, they can, when it comes down to it, especially if it's related to their business, they can get up and talk about stuff in front of people. They're very quick and fast learners as well. And they usually shine when they talk, especially at parties, you know, they can really, really come alive, especially if they've had a drink and stuff like that. And they're amazing learners, so these people should carry on learning, you know, lots of different things for as long as they can because they're very good at that. Okay. The fourth house we have Virgo here. So the fourth house rules our house and home. And they can sometimes have a parent who is an earth sign, or they may have been a Libra or something like that, but somewhere around that cusp. So it could be, they could be a Leo or a Libra or a Virgo, but usually the mother is very, very critical of, of the, the Gemini ascendant. Their mother is usually very critical, a bit mean, um, the, you know, the, the sibling, their, their sibling is usually golden child, so the sibling, the, the Leo sibling or the, the one who has Leo in it, the, the sibling who's very, they're usually the one who gets all the glory while the Gemini ascendant is, is the one who seems to get criticised and dragged down by their parents. This is very common in this ascendant sign. And yeah, so th their mum is usually like this. Um, she's usually more interested in, in either, you know, work or, or, or the home. She's usually not um she's there for them and and if anything she does too much too much f for them growing up but at the same time she can be very critical very um cold and, and drag them down and this can even happen as, as they get older as well so these these parents can even if their, their child has done something amazing they, their, their parent will find it really hard to to uh, give them some praise if, if that makes sense so as well as this, we, we usually see that the this ascendant sign has a parent who is an addict in some way. Um, if they're not a critical, cold, detached type of mother, we usually see that they may have been an addict or something like that as well. And this person usually feel or has always felt criticised by their parents. They always feel like the sibling got more praise and attention and stuff like that. Um, so that's quite common. The fifth house we have Libra here, so we have Venus. So these people love to party. They usually have a lot of short romantic flings early on in their life and a lot more shorter relationships as well. They can get involved in drugs and you know they generally love risk taking and they like to party a lot more. They can be seen on, on the scene, you know, we can even see drug dealers here. We can see people who love to gamble, people who love to, to be part of the partying scene, going out, clubbing, all these kind of things. So that's, that's quite normal for this ascendant sign as well. And we usually see these people as being quite artistic and quite creative as well. Okay. 
and they love to have fun. They can be really, really silly and they just love to have a good time. This is what uh, Gemini Ascendants are, are like. The sixth house, we have Scorpio here, so we have Mars. So these people usually pick a goal in their career and they're very, very determined until they get it. And they usually do. So they're usually very successful in their careers. They usually get what they want. They can be workaholics actually, especially at certain times in their life, they can be very obsessive over work, especially what a Scorpio is like. And they will generally stay in careers for a longer period of time because Scorpio is a fixed sign. They w they may change careers as well, for, but they may stay in each career, different career for a good chunk of time and then before they move on to the next one. So uh, they, they, they generally do really well because Mars is the warrior. They will you know, fight their competitors, they will make sure that they win at work and they usually do. And they're very, very good as well with like at fighting any kind of problem with the health that will usually, you know, destroy whatever that is just with their will alone. These people have a lot of willpower, but they, you know, at different times in their life, they can let addictions get, get the better of them, but they do get over them. So if you are suffering in this way, just know that you will get over it. You have to use the power of this house to, to, to overcome that and you will. So just remember that you, you are the warrior. Just put your efforts into work and manifesting and that will help those addictions and things like that as well. Okay, the seventh house we have Sagittarius here, so we have Jupiter. So these people usually attract a lot of Pisces and a lot of Sagittarius friends and they usually have karma with these people and they can attract more Sagittarius and Pisces business partners, friends, you know, lovers, all those kind of things. And they, they can often attract people who, who have commitment issues. They can often attract um, relationships, um, you know, where, where the, the partner wants a lot of freedom. And these people are usually very, very well known, almost famous in their hometowns. So everyone usually knows these people. Like, oh, do you know so-and-so? Yeah, 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 I know him. It's that kind of thing. Like, everyone knows these people. They are well known. They are famous in their hometown. They're usually famous in, in, in the surroundings. These people usually have um, a lot more periods of celibacy than, than other signs. So usually they'll get into relationships and then that, that for some reason the sex doesn't continue or it stops and this is because Saturn's a really cold planet and it restricts whatever house it's in and the eighth house is the house of sex this is really frustrating and I think this is the worst part of this ascendant sign because these guys are generally more sexual than not um, but they do end up having large long amounts of, of and periods of celibacy in their lives periods of sexual restriction and sexlessness even in committed relationships, and this can be really upsetting for either themselves or their partner, depending on who's the more sexual one. You know, and their ability to grow and transform can sometimes be take longer. So these people usually change and transform a lot, you know, from 30 onwards, after the age of, of 30, 35, these people tend to, they transform more then, rather than before. So, you know, this is this can be quite frustrating for this sign, but there's so much to be learned here. It's it's about learning to be more allowing, learning to be less controlling, learning to be more warm and and open and receptive. So this is a call because what can happen is um, these people can can almost reject their partners without even realizing that they're doing it because they don't realize that actually it's it's not just about the sex it's about more than that it's about being vulnerable you know letting themselves be more receptive be more open be more less controlling and when they are these things they would attract more sex to them but because they become quite controlling and and very masculine it's especially a pro this ascendant sign can be a problem for some women because you know they, they try and take a more masculine role rather than being more feminine and if they did take the more feminine role the these people would have a lot more success in relationships and stuff like that um, so what I would say is use these periods of, of celibacy as, as 
you know, introspection and, and use these periods to analyse what you may be doing in your relationship that may be stopping you from having the kind of relationship that you want. Okay, so the ninth house, we have Aquarius and Saturn here. So these people are usually quite fixed with, with what they believe and it's quite hard to change their mind and they can be quite set on when, when they believe something. And these people can often go back to education later on in their lives, so they can go back and learn something, you know, in their 30s, in their 40s, in their 50s, um, and, and that's great, you know, they're, they're lifelong students and they never stop learning, and they usually do go back and re-educate themselves, which I think is amazing. Um, and like I say, as I said before, they're very well known in their local area. And they're a very expansive thinker. They think in a very big way. You know, um, they then they're not very judgmental at all. They're very free, very free thinkers. They they accept everybody. They don't. They very rarely judge, which is one of the most beautiful things about this sign. Um, the tenth house we have Pisces here, so Jupiter. This is a great position for, for career. These people usually have huge careers, huge success in their careers. They can attract fame very, very easily because Jupiter is a benefic and we have it in the house of fame and reputation. So they are seen as others. So other people see them as, as being very artistic, very lucky, very, you know, um, charismatic, very creative and they usually have huge success in their careers. The shadow side of, of Pisces being here is people can see them as being addicts, which, which they often are. Even if it's just at a certain period of their life and they get over it, these people are usually addicts at some time in their life and it's usually alcohol or drugs or something like that because Pisces rules both of these areas. But they are very lucky and they are very blessed in career matters. Okay. So it's up to you, you know, which, which one of these do you want to be? Do you want to be the addict? Do you want to be known for that? Or do you want to be known as this lucky, amazing, creative, artistic person? And Pisces rules the film industry, the music industry. So these are all natural talents that you should explore. And you should explore them because Gemini is curious. And you should explore these even later on in life. You don't have to be the best in the world at something just to get good at it you know just do it anyway do it to learn it do it to enjoy it okay so the 11th house we have mars here so these people usually especially the women they usually have more male friends than than female friends they are usually quite masculine and laddie in in the way that they are friends with others so they have more male friends they prefer hanging out with men, especially the women, and and the men are yeah, you know, um, that that they. they Obviously, they're men anyway, so that that's a bit different. But um, they they these people do attract more friends into their lives, uh, who are more ruled by Mars. So they may attract other Scorpios. Um, you know, they may attract Aries, Scorpio. You know those kind of, uh, of people. Okay, and the 12th house, last but not least, these people have Taurus here, so we have Venus. So these people love spirituality, they love to, to learn about these things, and they usually have a very earthy uh, way of being spiritual. Like for them, spirituality will be like going for a walk and rubbing their hands in some soil or touching a tree and really feeling the energy in that tree or something like that you know they, they bring the earth element into their spirituality they're, they're likely to go go outside into the countryside and do a full moon ritual and roll around in the mud or you know those kind of things but these people find spirituality in nature through being outside they 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 may go for a long walk to relax and things like that um, but this also can can mean, especially for, for the men, this is more in the, more in the male, not necessarily the women, because the twelfth house is is the house of losses. These men can sometimes, for some reason, lose the love of their life in some way, and this is usually through addiction. Um, so it's not that they end up alone or anything like that. They will end up in happy relationships, and some of them will end up with the love of their life. But a lot of these men do end up losing the one who should have been their wife, who, who they should have been with. 
so this is because uh, we have Venus here in the 12th house so they they and, and this can really tear them apart and some of them don't get over it but you know you must get over it you know sometimes there's just a lesson in there to help you heal from your addiction to so that you you know you can learn from what you lost there um, and and heal so I hope that makes sense uh, this is an amazing ascendant sign so much potential for amazing success in your career um, you know these people do do you know thrive career wise they do have a little a few more problems relationship wise and sex wise and things like that but you know ama amazing you know um, ability to transform they can have huge success in life and so much charisma very popular people and you know if you would like to this is just kind of a, a general rundown a full birth chart will give you so much more information um, into this personality and I really hope you enjoyed um, this video and um, please share it please like please subscribe please look at the other selection of videos that that I have available for you to watch and if you'd love a birth chart, I'll put my website down below. Please get in touch. I do private readings, psychic readings. I do astrological birth chart readings. I also do psychotherapy as well. And um, I also have these necklaces to sell, um, which you can see here. Um, I do, I am selling these as well. So you can buy one of these. <coughs> so I'll put all the links down below. And I really hope you enjoyed uh, this video. I enjoyed making it. Thank you so much and I'll speak to you soon. Amen.